I'm here to help you with your jump shooting on NBA 2K25. Hit that subscribe button. I hope y'all like the video. First thing first, if you are shooting 40% to 55%, you are amongst the top players in the community at jump shooting because they want, when I say they, I mean the developers, they want the shooting percentages to be closer to real life. And in real life, great three point shooters shoot high 40%. So if you're struggling to shoot, but you are in the 40 to 50% range, you are in the top of the community. First thing we're gonna do is go to our settings. And in our settings, we're gonna go to shot feedback and make sure it is on all shots. You want all information for your jump shooting, whether you're slightly earlying, slightly lading. That way you can make mental adjustments. If I'm slightly early, hold the button longer to now get a perfect. If I'm slightly late, I gotta let off the button sooner to get a perfect release. That's what we are aiming for. They also added a very new feature to the game. This is called your shot time and profile. You can set it to high risk, normal risk, low risk, real player, or based on difficulty. Real player percentage isn't available online, so that's not an option. High risk, high reward is the best to use because it gives you the biggest green window. The problem is, if you're not green in your shot, you're going to miss it 100%. But normal risk, low risk gives you a chance to not green it but the ball will still go in high risk gives you the largest green window out of all the selection normal risk if you want 2k to help you make more shots because you are struggling on high risk low risk is if your internet is bad and you want to still make wide open jump shots so you are not really in control next we're going to go to controller settings on our controller settings our vibration we turn in that off we don't want to be affected on our button presses. We just want a seamless experience. Shot timing, we're putting that on our shots and our layups. We want 100% control of everything we do on the court. Your free throw timing is your user timing. And your shot timing visual cue is personal to yourself. Me personally, I'm comfortable with it being on set point. This is from 2K24. If you yourself is more comfortable with, let's say, a push, put that to push. Fun fact, 2K25, when you making your my player, you can set a custom shot timing location. That is to be played with. I haven't got to try that yet. But you will be able to visually put whatever you want as your release timing in 25. Jump shot meter, you turn that off. Turning off your shot meter gives you a boost to your jump shooting and you need to take advantage of that every time you shoot the ball. Your layup meter, this also gives you a boost to making layups and you want to take advantage of that by turning it off but if it's more comfortable to you turn the layup meter on this isn't a penalty to making layups layups are pretty easy to make so you seeing where the green window is should help you play the game and this also goes into you feeling comfortable learning your layup timing so i 100 percent endorse you to turn on your layup meter it isn't too much of a penalty but you do get a boost for having it off free throw meter you turn that off this definitely gives you a boost to your free throw shooting and free throw shooting is pretty difficult to make so you need all the help you could get and i highly advise you to turn it off also to be a better shooter you need great badges and the fastest way to level up your badges is with the street ball game now with street ball being co-op you can invite your friends here and y'all could shoot around together and both work on your badges at the same time i highly recommend y'all get in here to get your hot spots get your badges play these street ball games and you will begin to become a better shooter above anything else and now that we're in here, set me a screen. He goes under the screen, I shoot it, I knock it down. And as you gonna see at the top, my badges begin to activate. And if I was to play this whole game out, I will begin to make progress to level up my shooting badges and get hot spots in the locations that I'm shooting from. It's 
pretty easy to shoot over their contested hands as well, so they add little to no challenge out here. Next, you're going to want to visit Art of Shooting. And if you look at the map on 2K25, this is where Art of Shooting is located. Go there, enter the gym, and this is how you work on your hot zones. Look at me. I have hot zones all around the three-point area. As y'all just saw from that street ball game, I shot a three from this location in particular. This is one of my hot zones. So if i was to start my legend of shooting drills let's get to work. i can then turn these hot zones into legend zones so we're going to choose the right center make sure they're already hot spots and their locations you want to shoot from when you actually play in nba 2k when you're on the park make sure these are locations you constantly shoot from you only get two zones to choose so now that we choose those zones we got to get these shots up and since we know our release we gonna knock these down pretty simple and easy another point of good shooting is finding a jump shot release that you yourself is comfortable with that's extremely important and i want y'all to practice a player's jump shot look around the community and see what shots give you the best feeling of being a green you gotta know your shot before you even get out on multiplayer to be putting up shots in game i'm very comfortable with this shot as y'all can see so i'm confident that i could win against anybody when i get on the court as long as i'm open i'm gonna take these shots i am confident out here and when we get done this drill y'all gonna see i'm gonna have lethal zones where i'm already hot which is going to increase the percentage of me even making threes from these locations now we just got done so now those zones should have changed to lethals and as you can see in the top they went from red to purple make sure you got it like they that. are already red when you go into them zones that's how you turn them into purple and when they become purple they are your lethal zones and you will hit even more shots from there with these tips you definitely 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 will become a better shooter on nba 2k25 and i've saved my best tip for last this is my favorite part of nba 2k this has been in the game for many years and i think y'all gonna love this what i'm talking about is microtransactions, which means the game is paid to win you go to your boost go over the skill boost and jump shot they are 1500 vc and me i like to buy as many as i can this way when you shoot the ball you having a boost to your jump shot i think it's a plus five to whatever attribute you buy a boost for but definitely i don't play the game without it these boosts can turn a average shooter into a great shooter i highly recommend you buy these boosts every time you jump on a park because it is extremely important to win that's the problem with 2k the fact that it is pay to win and I hate to admit that, but if you are shooting on the park without buying boosts, you are setting yourself and your teammates up for failure. Let me know if any of these tips helped you. If there's more tips down in the comments, let each other know about it. Hit that subscribe button. I hope y'all liked the video and we getting out of here.